signed two G League guards uh, after waiving Dwayne Bacon and Javante McCoy. Uh, the Lakers have signed LJ Figueroa and Shaquille Harrison. Uh, so right off the bat, um, we didn't even get to really see McCoy play. So obviously the Lakers must not have been very high on him, must have not have really liked what they saw from him. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people... Uh, based on like my comment section and stuff like that, really wanted to see McCoy play. Uh, you know, maybe maybe he gets some work in on the G League team and maybe gets another shot. Maybe he gets a shot elsewhere. Um, but again, we didn't get to see him in any action to really know. Uh, you know, if he was somebody that would have been worth you know keeping around, not necessarily playoff spots. Now you got to keep in mind these aren't deals that are going to be like, oh, the Lakers just signed two guys to their roster. No, these are just you know sort of auditions uh, in real games. Uh, for just the preseason, these guys are very likely going to get waived. But if they like any of these guys, then what what'll happen is they'll they'll bring them in to their G League team, stuff like that. Give these guys a shot, shot. Just trying to see if there's anybody that they really, uh, you know, any hidden gems, any diamonds in the rough uh, type thing. Now, Dwayne Bacon, he was a guy that uh, many people wanted to have a real shot, but it's what I was saying. You know, the problem is he's a shooting guard that can't shoot. Um, he has you know decent size, but Nothing that really stood out. I mean, he had that uh, that 11 points in six minutes, and everyone was like, you know, sign him up. You know, the Lakers need to scoop him up immediately. And I even made a video about it and even talked about it in a live stream. I was like, look, got to relax. I mean, I could go out there. You could go out there and under the right circumstances just get hot and, you know, put up 11 points in six minutes. You know, I mean, it's <laughs> it happens, especially with NBA players. These guys are still good in comparison to, like, the rest of the world, and he did it against, you know, the end of the end of the end of the bench guys. He didn't do this against the starters and stuff. And then he got, and I said, let's see what happens when he gets some real run time. Let's see what happens when he gets 20 minutes. And he played 21 minutes and just gave a good old goose egg and was 0-7. Uh, turnovers just, he looked terrible out there. And that was the point. And that's, that was my point exactly, is that like, you know, just because somebody looks good for a moment doesn't mean that they're actually very good. There's a reason, uh, you know, a guy like Dwayne Bacon, who has NBA experience, who has been on teams uh, for several seasons now, doesn't have a job when he is a, you know, reasonable defender, has reasonable size, stuff like that. So that's just a big thing. But moving on to the actual players that the Lakers sign, first off, Shaquille Harris, he uh, he's interesting. Um, I don't really think either of these guys are, have a chance to make the roster. I don't think either of these guys really are going to do anything groundbreaking. Um, especially Shaquille Harris. He's twenty nine. He's been a, a bit of a journeyman. Problem is, he's also only six four. And I think the Lakers really need size. I think this is more of like, is there any potential in him that maybe we can bring him on to like the G League team? I think this is more of a G League tryout. Um, but, you know, he's played for Brooklyn, Denver, Utah, Chicago, uh, Phoenix, uh, Chicago again, and Phoenix again. <laughs> Those are the teams that he's played for. He's averaged around 15 minutes and put up five points on 43% shooting, um, 1.5 assists, stuff like that. So, is that a little burn? Uh, the most that he's ever played was in 2018. He played 73 games for Chicago, and then in 2019 played 43 games for Chicago. Outside of that... It's just been, you know, 17, 23, and then two seasons with less than 10 games. So, again, not like a major standout, uh, 6'4", 180 pounds, uh, just kind of a, a young journeyman uh, that needs some more. I think they just they just want to see if there's anything there with him. They must, you know, be kind of high on him, like him a little bit. Um, no, Lakers scouting department has been great. They know, and they don't waste time, as we saw. Uh, so this is kind of like, hey, we got a couple more games. We got a handful of games. Let's see what uh, these other young guys we like. And you're seeing several teams, not just the Lakers. Several teams are starting to wave and add new players and stuff like that because that's what you're doing. You're trying to find guys that you can bring into your system, that you can bring into your culture, that you can you know, maybe develop for a role later on down the line. Or maybe you find somebody that just is a real standout. You know, Maybe, maybe there is that Austin Reeves, that diamond in the rough that just comes in and immediately can make an impact. You never know. Uh, you know, I mean, if, you know, Harrison looks great and he's knocking down threes and he's, you know, knocking down shots and playing defense and stuff like that, maybe they give him a shot. It's just uh, not out of the realm of possibility. But if, again, if I'm being honest, I don't think either of these guys make the team um, personally. I just, I don't see it happening. But moving on to LJ Figueroa. So he's got a little more size. He is 6'6", 
Uh, he's only also only 24 years old. Um, so he's been on the Santa Cruz Warriors uh, since 2021. So basically has gone straight there. Doesn't actually have any NBA um, playtime. Um, but he uh, he did uh, he was with St. John's uh, between 2018 and 2020, averaged about 14 and a half points, and then in 2020 or sorry yeah 2020 2021 uh, he was he he transferred to Oregon where he averaged uh, 12.3 points, and that's just you know he's a guy that's got size. I think it's uh you know it's a 24 year old guy, six six, got some good size, got some good length, 200 pounds. Um, I think they're looking at him as like. You know, is is there anything here for the future? This isn't again. Neither of these signings, I think, are guys that are actually going to make the team at all. I think these are more just just looks for the G League team, for you know the farm system stuff like that. Is it uh are any of these guys guys good enough to to maybe you know be a part of our affiliates and then kind of work their way into actually being on the roster? That's what these are. So again, nothing like major. No like uh. No, like, highlight players, stuff like that. But the problem is, is that, like, at this point, that's all there is out there. And that's what all these teams are trying to do. They're all trying to find that diamond in the rough. They're all trying to find that undrafted rookie, you know, or that that guy in the G League who is better than the G League that has an opportunity to come in and come up. And, like, that's that's what they're all trying to find right now. Because, I mean, all of the vets that are out there, all the guys with NBA experience that's out there, there's a reason they're all still out there. There's a reason that teams aren't jumping at the opportunity. And maybe some of it is fit. You know, like, I think a lot of, like, DeMarcus Cousins and Hassan Whiteside, I think a lot of that is just most teams have their their front court rotations, especially a team like the Lakers. Um, although I do think, like, a team like, you know, Boston or, like, even, uh, even the Nets could really use, like, a big man. Go get Whiteside or Cousins. But, you know, the reason for that. And then other guys, they said, like, Bacon, you know, Josh Jackson, unless he's... Uh, no, he's signed already. My mistake. Uh, yeah, but, like, guys like Dwayne Bacon, stuff like that. Those guys, like, they're they're just... They're, they, they have, they're just a body to have a body, essentially. You know, yeah, maybe he could get hot in the here and there, but for the most part, he's not... He's not consistent, and that's what the Lakers are trying to find. And if you're, and if you're trying to find consistency, then you're not... You're not it's going to be hard to find right now. So it's like if there's not consistency out there, if there's not a 3 and D guy out there, because that's kind of all it is, it's either 3 or D. So if there's not a 3 and D guy out there, let's find somebody that has upside to potentially be there one day. You know, that's what the Lakers are trying to do. That's what the Lakers are trying to find. And so are all these other teams. So many teams are trying to just find that, just find those gems, just find those pieces. But as always, this is a discussion, so I want to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. First off, what did you think of the Lakers uh, waving McCoy and Bacon? Do you think that was a good choice? Are you a little disappointed? How do you feel about that whole situation? Uh, and do you think that one of them deserved a spot, deserved more time, deserved more run? Uh, you know, love to hear your thoughts and opinions on that. And then as for these two, Harrison and Figueroa, uh, do you think either of these guys have a chance to uh, make the team? Would you? Are you familiar with any of these guys? Is there any of these guys that you're like, oh, yeah, like, you know, he could be a real spot. He could be a real shine. Uh, or do you think, like, these are just G League guys for a reason? Uh, would you be okay, you know, if they're, if they're a little standouts, maybe bring in on the affiliate team, you know, run with us, and then just kind of build in our farm system? Because, again, that's that's what the Lakers are trying to find. The Lakers are just trying to find somebody, a player to several that, uh, that they believe in enough long term. And we just got to trust our scouting department. We have to trust that they know what they're doing, that they can figure it out. They... I mean, their track record has been impeccable so far, right? I mean, they have done such a great job. Even Max Christie, the draft pick, his shot isn't right, isn't there yet, but defensively, that kid is a monster. That kid is so good defensively. So, I mean, if one of these guys, you know, could play solid defense, knock down some shots, I think that they, uh, they'll at least earn a spot on the G League team. But I don't, I don't think it's, I don't think they're gonna either. Of these guys are, are actual roster players uh, for that final roster spot. I think the Lakers end up just keeping that open, but. Again, however you feel, good, bad, ugly, somewhere in between, let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below.
Quick little shameless plug everyone, if you enjoy my videos and commentary here on this channel As It Stands Lakers, then check out the link down in the description below and go subscribe to As It Stands. Believe it or not, As It Stands was the first channel. If it wasn't for that channel, this channel would never have existed. Because of the success of that channel, it led me to want to create this Lakers channel. So do me a huge solid if you're not subscribed over there, go check that out. Go subscribe over there. I talk all things sports, uh, all teams, things like that, not just the Lakers. So if you just enjoy my commentary and want to hear me talk about other things, or you just, you know, are a fan of other sports and other teams, go check that out. I promise you will not be disappointed. That being said, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Let's me know you enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button, follow by the bell notification, stay up to date with all things sports, join this wonderful community and all of our discussions. I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.